In this review, I'm going to be talking about atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. So AFib is one of the most common rhythms you're going to see in a hospitalized patient. And what's occurring with this rhythm is that the atria are not beating like they should. Instead, they're beating at a very fast, irregular rate. And what's happening in a sense is that those atria are just quivering. And whenever they quiver, they don't pump blood very well. Instead, blood just pulls in there, which could lead a blood clot to develop, which could eventually lead the patient to have a stroke. Now, how can you tell that your patient is in AFib? Well, let's look at the criteria and characteristics for this rhythm. When you look at the ECG waveform, you're gonna see that P waves are not present before the QRS complexes. Instead, the P waves are replaced with these irregular fibrillatory waves, which we call F waves. And they can be either described as being fine or coarse, depending on their amplitude. Now, because of this, you can't count the atrial rate, but if you could, the atrial rate would be really fast and irregular. It would be greater than 400 beats per minute. Now, when you look at the QRS complexes, they will be present and they should measure less than 0.12 seconds. Now, our QRS complex tells us about the ventricular rate and rhythm. So the rhythm is going to be irregular and the rate can be anywhere between being normal or it can be fast, greater than 100 beats per minute. Now, if it's greater than 100 beats per minute, it's termed uncontrolled a fib and whenever this occurs significant complications can happen because that heart is just beating way too fast it's not pumping like it should therefore heart failure can develop if we don't get this rate under control and if the rate is less than 100 beats per minute this is considered controlled afib and because of the presentation of this rhythm you cannot measure the pr interval or the qt interval now what are the causes of afib well it can happen after heart surgery a lot of times after after a person has some procedure on their heart, it can cause them to enter this rhythm. Or they have some significant heart problem, like they have a valve problem, especially problems with the mitral valve, or they have coronary artery disease, they've had a heart attack, or pericarditis. Plus, lung conditions can affect this, especially like COPD. And further studies have shown that patients who have sleep apnea are at risk for developing atrial fibrillation. So we definitely wanna make sure we're screening patients for sleep apnea because they may be at risk for this abnormal heart rhythm. So what's the treatment for AFib? Well, it really depends on the patient. Are they having symptoms? Are they stable or unstable? Is this patient having controlled or uncontrolled AFib? So if the patient is stable, Stable, meaning they have no symptoms and it's controlled, so it's less than 100 beats per minute, we wanna make sure that we continue to monitor them and that that rate stays controlled. And then notify the doctor for further orders if needed and if the patient's condition becomes unstable. But let's say that the patient is unstable. Their blood pressure is dropping. They have decreased cardiac output. You can tell that this heart is just not able to maintain perfusion. Plus, they have an uncontrolled rate. Well, they're gonna need a procedure called a single synchronized cardioversion. And with a cardioversion, it's gonna deliver a shock synchronized with the patient's R wave and convert them back to normal sinus rhythm. Now, before the cardioversion, you wanna know how long the patient's been in AFib because they may need anticoagulation prior to having the cardioversion to prevent blood clot problems. And many times before a cardioversion, a TEE will be performed, which is a transesophageal echocardiogram. And it is where they use ultrasound, they go through the patient's mouth down through the throat and they will go behind the heart through like the esophagus and they can take pictures of the heart and see if there are any blood clots present in the heart and if the patient doesn't have a blood clot they can be cardioverted now after the cardioversion patients may need for several weeks after the procedure some type of anticoagulation to prevent any blood clot problems now patients can also be cardioverted through pharmacological methods instead of through electrical methods and medications that can be used for that are like cardizem, which is known as deltiazem, also adenosine, amiodarone, or other types of medications. And then some other medications that can be used that you wanna be familiar with as a nurse are those anticoagulants. One type is warfarin, also known as Coumadin. And this is just going to help with clot formation, preventing that. And then the patient can be prescribed beta blockers, for instance, like propranolol or calcium channel blockers, deltiazem in pill form, um, just to help maintain a normal rate and rhythm. And then sometimes the patient needs further treatment because sometimes it just doesn't work very well. The patient 
continues to go in atrial fibrillation. So they may consider doing an ablation. And an ablation is a procedure that ablates, hence that word means destroys or erodes, some of the tissue in the heart to prevent it from abnormally firing like this in the future. Okay, so that wraps up this video on AFib. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this ECG series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.